Hello, I'm Jonathan M0JSX. Thanks for joining me today. And Yesu have finally done it. Uh, this isn't new news at all, but last month, Yesu finally killed the Yesu FT818. And I have some thoughts about this, so I thought I'd uh, go through a few of them uh, with you. But first, let's have a step into history. And in 2001, Yesu launched the FT817, which at the time was revolutionary. All of HF, six meters, two meters and 77s in one small form factor radio, offering five watts out with an internal battery, hadn't been done before by anyone. So it really was a game changer in terms of the QRP market. And it did very well for Yosu. Three years later, they did an update with the 817ND, which they ironed out a few issues that the uh, initial 817 had in terms of uh, the PA, sometimes blowing for no apparent reason, uh, and also some excessive current draw when the radio was switched off with, with the internal battery in. So they fixed those couple of issues with the 817ND. They also added a third color on the backlight. That's right, if your 817 can do purple, it's an ND. And sometimes that's the only way that you can tell the difference between the two. Uh, and the 817ND ran for about 14 years years. In 2018, Yesu were unable to continue the manufacture of the 817ND uh, because of component shortages, which led them to redesign the radio and produce the FT818ND. Now, at the time, I remember thinking this was a little bit weird, particularly giving it a new number or a new model number, because I thought if it, they were doing a redesign of the same radio, it would have made far more sense to call it something like the 817 Mark II, Mark III, 817 MP maybe. But to give it the 818 name, kind of to me implied it was a brand new radio from the ground up, which it wasn't. Now the 818 did offer some advantages over the 817 it replaced. It had an extra watt of output power, so it had six watts rather than five, and also included the high stability TCXO, which was always an option for the 817, but included that as standard with the 818. But that was it. It was still a serial port on the back. It was still a, uh, an audio system where you had to have a sound card externally. They didn't in think to include those inside the package. And I think that's kind of where Yesu went a little bit wrong with the 818. I think if they were to do the 818 again, if go back and, and try and redo it again, uh, what they should have done would be to put the sound card and, a, and the USB converter in the radio and put either a mini uh, micro USB uh, or even to USB Type C, that was around in 2018, uh, on the rear of the radio. And of course, roll forward to the end of 2022, and Yesu have now completely discontinued the 818, citing component shortages once again. And this time, it looks like they're not going to redesign it. And I think that's probably the correct decision. We are now 21 years after the initial launch of the 817, and I think it's probably had its time. So where could Yesu go next? And I've got some thoughts on this because I think Yesu have always done very well with the 818 with its price point being more expensive than some of the cheaper end items. Things like the Zygu G90 and the G106. Of course, I did a, a video on the G106, which you can view just up there. Uh, but it's not as expensive either as things like the uh, Elecraft KX3 or the ICOM IC705. And I think if Yesu were to produce a new QRP radio, they should be aiming for the same kind of price, that kind of 600 to 700 pound price mark. For one, for Yesu, it would encourage people who are looking at a QRP radio, and particularly looking at sort of the Zygu end of things, to save up a bit more and possibly buy something by one of the major three manufacturers. But also it's gonna still some people who are looking towards things like the 705 and thinking actually i don't need to spend 1200 pounds on a qrp radio 
I can spend £700 and I've got a whole wadge of cash in order to buy accessories with or whatever it happened to be. I also think that the A2 should stick with that kind of form factor that the 818 had with that sort of long thin body and the screen on the front. Maybe make it a little bit thicker for a slightly larger screen. Maybe that's a colour screen. Maybe it's a touch screen. Maybe it has a scope. But I don't think those things are absolutely necessary. And I think things like the G106 prove that those things aren't necessary on a radio that you're probably going to be taking out and about with you. I think that Yaesu definitely need to make improvements in the receiver compared to the 818, maybe making it an SDR based receiver rather than traditional super heads. I'd also like to see Yaesu up the power from 6 watts to 10 and I think that would put it in line with what we come to expect from a QRP radio today. However, I don't think Yaesu should look to include an internal tuner in this radio because I think that if you're going out portable then you should either aim to have fully resonant antennas or try and use some kind of external tuner which is always going to offer better performance than the and finally and most crucially it needs to have a USB port on the back and I said this exactly the same thing about the G106 when I reviewed it by not having a USB port on the back it really limits functionality in 2023 because most people now expect some kind at the very least some kind of cat control over USB and for me that's one of the reasons I upgraded from my 817 to the 705 is the fact that if I was using it in the shack for instance because I have done so I can plug it into my computer over one USB cable and not only have I got that cat control for, so for logging it's really useful that it pulls through that band data but also that sound card as well so if I want to run FT8 PSK31, Ritzy, any of the digital modes, I'm just using one cable and it does everything. One thing that Yosu could learn from the 705 is the RF noise, the RF interference that the USB chip causes. Uh, Steve over on Temporarily Offline did a really good video a few months back uh, where he explained how to solve that noise. His video was so good, I followed his steps and have made exactly the same cable based on an FT24043 toroid and a really long USB to micro USB cable. It does the trick, it kills the noise, but that's something that we shouldn't have to do. That should I should just be able to use a bog standard USB cable and it work without causing me any additional noise. So there we have it, there are my thoughts as to what Yesu have done and what they could or should do in the future but I'm interested to know what your thoughts are. Do you think that Yesu should have killed the 818? Do you think that maybe they should have redesigned it again and continued with that radio? Or do you think that actually it was about time? Do you own an 818? Have you ever owned an 817 or an 818 and do you still have it or have you upgraded to something else? I'm really interested to know. Thanks very much for watching. There's another video coming up over here that the YouTube algorithm thinks that you might like next. And until the next time, 73. Bye-bye.